Hello, welcome to today's episode of The Rosani Show, a show I dedicate to talk things about theatre methods, methods, and also some other things. And today I'll be talking about theatre methods. Alright, today I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite topics, and that is drama dramaturgy. Uh, I put a video before out there, and just to kind of help some of you who is thinking of doing dramaturgy of or, or you know how do you practice dramaturgy well there are many ways that you can practice dramaturgy as i mentioned before you can read books about it there are plenty of books uh, on amazon you can buy them all book depository um you can ask a, a local dramaturg and say hey um, I heard about dramaturgy, I'm curious about it and I want to shadow you if it's possible to to see how how it works. Or you can attend courses, you know, there's so many courses in the UK, uh, in Singapore, you know, Centre 42 has got a couple of dramaturgy courses but they run once a year so just keep a lookout for that. Uh, I know the US has got a couple of courses too. Or if you want, you can go dive full in and do a masters in dramaturgy. No, you can do it in America, there are plenty of universities, the masters of dramaturgy, in the UK they cut up a couple too. Um, in Europe also, uh, there's quite a number of masters that has dramaturgy. Um, and just bear in mind that dramaturgy in the English speaking world and the non-English speaking world, predominantly non-English speaking world, may not mean the same thing, but you're being trained for similar skills. And that is to help design and compose a dramatic composition. It could be a play, it could be a musical, it could even be dance or performance art, um, and I would say as far as curating a museum. If you want to curate your exhibition to, to give some sort of narrative, some sort of story, played with... Um, emotions you know what happens when the audience come in first and then yeah so you can do that and there are many many ways um that you you can do it right so today i'm gonna share um three ways of how you can help uh to train yourself to be a a dramaturg or you can train yourself in a skill of dramaturgy even though you don't want to be a dramaturg all right the first one is to identify a central conflict in any show that you watch be it a play a musical movies uh, an episode of a tv series or even a dance piece there has to be a central conflict and if you're working with um a playwright you know having attempted to write a couple of plays myself i've gotten a feedback that there is no central conflict or there are two many conflicts happening at the same time. All right, it's different when you want to have conflict within each scene to build to the next scene. So um, in copywriting, we say open loop. So you kind of create an open loop, which is a cliffhanger before the end of your scene. And then you close it in the next scene, you build it up and then you open it again for the last, for the next scene and it carries on. And normally there are like five stages, normally. Or even though it's a three-act play, there may be five stages of um, introduction of the problem, escalation, escalation, climax, de-escalation, which resolution, and then the end. So the climax is where the conflict leads to, and the biggest conflict is there. In any movie, it's usually you know towards the end when we find out. Or you, if you want to be adventurous, you can create like the conflict in the beginning and then your whole play or performance then becomes you know an aftermath of that conflict it's possible to so identify central conflicts that is very 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 important and how do you build up to that conflict secondly is are you playing with surprise or suspense and um i saw this on instagram uh it's an advice by alfred hitchcock and he was saying that, okay, if you were to have a scene between two people and they're talking 15 minutes in and then suddenly the table explodes, you know, 
and then blah 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 blah. So that is surprise, surprise for the audience, uh, surprise for the characters, right? Or you can show someone had planted a bomb under the table in the scene before, and then that person leaves, and then two characters come in and they're having a conversation. And throughout that 15 minutes, in the dramatic irony sense, the audience know that something is going to explode by the character, characters they don't know. So then you're creating suspense. And that is more exciting. That's always more exciting when you have suspense and not surprise. Okay, and thirdly, is sometimes having a central image works. So I took this of uh, the book, The um, Playwriting Craft. Um, I will put the book in the show, in the show notes. Um, and basically what uh, the author taught us is sometimes it ni it's nice to help with central image. So for example, in, in the book, he gave that uh, he had to work with uh, an applied theatre piece um, and he thought about a bicycle. And then he thinks about, and then he thought about different parts of the bicycle. So the central image becomes the bicycle. He branches out to different parts. So it could be the handle, the wheel, the pedals. And then it further branches out into the shape of those parts, a general shape of those parts, or where they are from, where they're made from. So if you take the, the wheel, for example, the shape is circle. So now you have a central image of something that goes round and round and round, but never being able to break free, for example. Or then you can have um, the image of, of where the tire was made because it's been created in a factory somewhere and there are workers in that factory. And then this worker is having a particular problem. Like he wants to leave, but he can't. And his child wants to not continue the same line of work you know he wants to do something else so therein lies a certain conflict that you can and it could be around bicycle you know it comes back to the idea of cycling of pedaling of of you know moving forward um idioms about bicycle would start to come in that then also becomes a central image so having a central image helps you know whether you are learning about dramaturgy or you are thinking about you know how do you want to build a world of the play around something a bit voila so that's all that's a very short episode for you on uh, practicing dramaturgy and what are some of the things that you can do so just to recap the first one is is there a central conflict identify the central conflict two are you working with suspense or surprise is what Alfred Hitchcock advised and three is there a central image that you are working with that might also help all right thank you very much for tuning into today's episode of the resigning show tune in for the next one see you or hear from you um, in the future and if you have any questions feel free to drop me an email at the resigning show at gmail Dot com. I'll come back to you and reply to your responses either on YouTube or on my podcast. So thank you very much. Have a great day. See you. I'll hear you very soon. Ciao, ciao.